the number on these guys. Steve Johnson, your countryman, he's sort of dealt to them a bit severely so far, hasn't he? He has. He's done extremely well the first race, and uh, I really don't think that uh, it's going to change much in the second. I think him and Glenn will uh, have a great race together, and it'll be for the miners behind them. And the word coming from the pits is more drama. We may have a problem for number six. That's the Ford Falcon of Paul Radisic. Uh, the word is he might be out of this race with a blown engine. So that would be more drama here already. This is the race two, of course, the 20 lap of the 20 minute sprint race. They're going to go for their warm up lap now, and you've got to keep your eyes out for two blue Ford Falcons. One's number nine, driven by Alan Jones. That looks like the car there. And of course, Paul Radisic, car number six. Not there yet, yeah, definitely missing. He was on the second row of the grid. Oh, he should have been up there, yes, on the second row. Finished fourth place, and this is where the, uh, the grid positions come from for this race. Greg Murphy, uh, Glenn Seaton finished in that order, and that's the way we pick them up for the start of their second race. They're running in the, uh, the order in which they finished the previous race, which was, of course, off uh, qualifying yesterday, which Murph took out. Brocky in the third spot. Paul Radisic meant to be alongside, and uh, maybe he's going to join the grid from the back, but that's not the desired place for our Kiwi Super Touring Car star. AJ, Alan Jones, the 1980 Formula One World Champion, position five. Dickie Johnson, whose son Steve's here with us, is in the sixth spot in the Shell FIA Falcon. In the next door spot, or right behind, John Bow in the team, the team car. Russell Engel in one of the two Castrol Perkins Commodores in the number eight spot. And Tony Longhurst had the spin out of the first race. Back in action off the ninth spot for this. And that's, of course, that space behind the Ford Falcon of Glenn Seaton is where Paul Radisic would have been, but he's out with the blowing engines. That's tragedy for one of the two Kiwis. So it's just down to Greg Murphy on pole for race two. Gets off to a pretty steady start. Look at Brock. Oh, Murph bogged it down. J Murph has bogged it down, and Brock, he's gone through following Glenn Seaton. So Murph uh, couldn't quite pull off the two in a row. He did a great job first time out, but now he's got all the work to do. What are his chances? It's, uh, it's going to be extremely tough for him at the moment. These first few laps, they're going to have to settle down. Uh, obviously they're all going to be going extremely fast and I think Murph uh, is going to have his work cut out especially passing his teammate and Glenn Seaton. He'll be pretty annoyed at that because you know, in the practice sessions this morning he sat there in that spot and practiced his starts and he got off the good starts. Look at this though, the dog fight up to towards the hairpin. Peter Brock trying the outside line around Seaton at the hairpin. First time Seaton shows him the outside of the track. Brock, he says, OK, I will give way to you right now. Now we've got this two mobile HRT cars side by side, and Merv's going to take it back from Brock. So he shows the uh, the master the way around the S's on the way up to Mobile Mountain. And yep. remember, of course, this is where they almost collided yesterday in practice, and Brock, he's down the inside again. That was a good move by Murphy, actually. He saw Brock try to pass Seaton on the outside and uh, basically got hung out to dry and Murphy just followed Seaton from the inside and passed him with great pass. The question is now, can he close the gap on Glenn Seaton, the Ford credit Ford Falcon, out in front. So it's Ford, Commodore, Commodore, and then the rest of the chasing pack as they sprint down, stretch the big legs, down the back straight of Pukekohe. You're on board with Greg Murphy in the Mobile One, number one Commodore. So full noise down the back straight, six gear, chopping it down, getting down to first. Who's that? Is that Dad That's, coming through uh, or JB? It looks like Johnny Bow up from, a, from group seven. Uh, he's passed uh, a few up there, he passed Jones in that last lap, so he's on a bit of a charge at the moment. So the HRT guys turning on the fun, and I think Murph is going to be uh, giving Glenn Seaton some grief pretty quickly because last time we saw them... Whoa, oh, Rocky! Rock. Well, doing a bit of the old Lord Moan, just going into Mobile Mountain. He had it up on two wheels, so he's got a bit of the old attitude back into that 05 Commodore. And the main man, Brocky, wants to get back into the top three and try to teach these young guys how to do it. You can uh, really see Brocky then having a big go. He's really throwing that car around, trying to keep up and uh, trying to be real aggressive, which we saw last year when he was running the Trans Ams with us. So no team waters on the HR team quite often. No, HRT team quite often. Doesn't look obviously. like it, does it? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> they just shoulder each other out of the way. No right. problem. Here comes Murph attacking Seaton. A good fight between Alan Jones coming back at John Bow and the FAA Falcon and the Allied Movers Falcon. John Bow oh, holding Oh, Murphy. No, no Brock. 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 Brock getting a little loose and uh, Bow's going to take advantage of that. Shall we take it? Oh, look at that. This is going off these guys. 
Peter Brock just getting it loose, coming out of the hairpin, and old uh, Johnny Bow. Yeah, I'll take that spot, no problem. It doesn't take much to uh, to pick up a position or lose a position. It takes just a little mistake like that. You go a little bit sideways, and uh, you can see it here on the replay. Check it out, Brocky just getting out on the strips, getting on the marbles first, then out onto the bump strip. And no traction out there, that's for sure. So John Bow down the back straight there in the Falcon. One of the few guys uh, running, he's doing the best out of the Dunlop runners right now, Steve. Yeah, the Dunlops uh, are fairly struggling at this track at the moment. Most of the tyres on the car are fine, except for the left-hand rear, which obviously most of the corners of Pukakaui are right-handers, which really load the left rear of Oh, for the, uh, here comes Rocky. Rocky setting him up. Oh, oh Rocky! Oh, big twitch there. Recovers well. He's having a classic rape. The old legend himself, isn't he? He's having a go. I can tell you that. He's using every bit of the track and more. I reckon JB watched the same thing. Watched the replay of the last race and the Craig Baird pull. Pulled the same move in the New Zealand touring car race. I think Rocky saw that, decided that's for me as well. Did it to Radisic last race. This time when he tries to do it again, no way. Peter Brock, let's take a look at the legend. Of course, the uh, three-time Australian touring car champion. Nine wins at Bathurst, shooting for number 10. Will it come along? Bart Cummings did it in the Melbourne Cup. Can Brocky do it for the fans at Mount, of course, uh, Mount Panorama? Two-time winner of the Wellington Street Race. He won back here in 1990 in a Ford Sierra at Pukekohe with Andrew Badecki. And he was fourth of this year's Australian touring car champion, Peter Brock, in the HRT team. And Jeez, it's fairly close here, isn't it? You can't, you can't put a paper between all these guys. And uh, Johnny Bear's one of the hardest guys to pass in the touring car scene. So all the three guys behind him are going to have to work extremely hard. But this but is what the crowd have come to see here at Pukekohe. Here we go. There's Brocky trying to get around the outside on the left-hander. So come the right-hander across the mountain. He's going to be on the right line. But what happens? Gets loose out there. Bow gives him no room. This has got the same sort of buzz as Bathurst. In fact, it probably feels bigger than Bathurst at the moment because for New Zealand te teams or New Zealand fans, we haven't seen the entire field of V8s. It's always been either your father, Dick Johnson, or Peter Brock out here against the uh, BMW. So it really has been a fantastic day so far. Over the top of Mobile Mountain, the number one HRT Commodore, Greg Murphy. Murph on his home turf, and he makes it back-to-back -back wins. In the V8 supercar, second John Bauer, third Alan Jones, then Dick Johnson. Coming down to the finish line will be Tony Longhurst, and then Larry Perkins, Glenn Seaton, rounding out the eight cars left in the field of the 12 starters from the two races. And there it is, another great performance by Greg Murphy. I don't care what people do with the tyre rule after this, but this is what brought the punters out to Pukekohe today. They wanted to see a Kiwi win to see if he could do it. And having been here and seen him do it twice, especially after a bit of a botch start, that's awesome. And I mean, this crowd, 30,000 people out there just loving it. Yeah, I know Murphy's done quite a lot of laps around Pukekohe. So just confirm those results for the Australian Touring Cars. Greg Murphy first in the number one car. So he's back-to-back -back victories, and he's taken 20 points so far from the two races. 40 points, I should say, of course. It's 20 points for a win. John Bauer second, Alan Jones third, Dick Johnson fourth. Rounding out the field, Tony Longhurst fifth, Russell Ingall sixth, then Glenn Seaton, Larry Perkins, and, of course, Peter Brock finishing with a few problems down the back of the field. Stay with us. Plenty of great racing to come this afternoon with the Mobile Auckland Sprints.